This is N1 Engineering Science, and we'll be looking at this chapter on dynamics. Please don't forget to like, comment, and share on this YouTube channel. To understand the quantities and units used in engineering science, here we have a number line. Everything to the left of the number line is positive, and everything to the right of the number line is negative. Kilo is 10 to the exponent of 3. Mega, 10 to the exponent of 6. Giga, 10 to the exponent of 9. Terra, 10 to the exponent of 12. Milli, 10 to the exponent of minus 3. Micro, 10 to the exponent of minus 6. Nano, 10 to the exponent of minus 9. And Pico, 10 to the exponent of minus 12. These are some symbols and abbreviations used in engineering science. Meter, the symbol is M. Liter, the symbol is L. Ampere, the symbol is A. Voltage, the symbol is V. Ohm, the symbol is Omega. And Watts, the symbol is W. Now to convert hours into seconds, we would multiply by 3600. To convert minutes into seconds, we'd multiply by 60. To convert kilometers into meters, we multiply by 1,000. To convert seconds into minutes, we divide by 60. And to convert meters into kilometers, we divide by 1,000. To convert meters per second into kilometers per hour, we would multiply by 3,6. And to convert kilometers per hour into meters per second, we would divide by 3,6. A scalar quantity is a quantity that only has magnitude, such as area, volume, density, pressure, distance, and speed. A vector quantity is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction, such as force, velocity, displacement, linear momentum, and angular momentum. Which of the following could represent a vector? Is it part A, 4 newtons? Or is it part B, 8 newtons east? And the vector here is 8 newtons east. Does the following represent a vector? Yes, the length of the arrow has magnitude and the arrow is pointing in a certain direction. As you have seen in the last two slides, a vector can be represented by describing as magnitude, unit, and direction in words, and also by mentioning the magnitude and unit, and then using an arrow to indicate the direction of the vector quantity. Identify the vector directed northeast. Is it vector 1, 2, or 3? Vector 2 is pointing northeast. There are multiple forces acting on this object. Identify the pair that are acting opposite to each other. I would say vector 2 and 4 are opposing each other. Are the vectors below opposite to each other? Yes, although the vectors are not along the same line, they point in opposite directions. Hence, they are said to be opposite, but the same in magnitude. Are the vectors below pointing in the same direction? Yes, the two vectors are parallel to each other as they are pointing in the same direction to each other. The vectors below are said to be equal provided they represent the same quantity. The given vectors are, would you say they are parallel, anti-parallel or equal? I would say none of the above. The vectors are not parallel as they do not point towards the same direction. They are not anti-parallel as they do not point in opposite directions. And they are not equal as their direction and magnitude are not the same. Let's look at some definitions used in engineering science such as distance. How far an object has traveled regardless of direction. Displacement. The shortest distance between the start point and the end point. Rest. When an object remains in the same position relative to another object. Motion. The change in position of an object with respect to a reference plane or another object. 
mass, the quantity of matter in an object such as a scalar quantity. Inertia, the tendency of an object at rest to remain at rest and an object in motion to remain in constant motion. Okay, here's our first practical example. We'll use our compass headings to assist us. If a person walks 8 kilometers east on one day and 6 kilometers east on the next day, what will be the resultant? 8 kilometers east plus 6 kilometers east would give us a resultant of 14 kilometers east. Now, in this example, a person walks 8 kilometers east on one day and 6 kilometers west on the next day. What will be the resultant? Well, these two vectors are opposing each other, and therefore the resultant will be smaller. 8 minus 6 gives us 2 kilometers east. Okay, a final example. A car travels 52 kilometers due west, then 185 kilometers southwest at 45 degrees, and then 68 kilometers due south. Graphically determine the displacement from the start point to the end point. We'll use our compass headings to assist us, and we'll create a nice and easy scale. 10 kilometers is equal to 1 centimeter. So our starting point, our car travels 52 kilometers due west, then 185 kilometers southwest at 45 degrees, and we'll use our protect, protractor. We'll use our ruler to determine that the vector size is 185 kilometers or 18.5 centimeters. Then it travels 68 kilometers due south, which is 6.8 centimeters. And then we can find our resultant from the end point to the start point. Now the angle of this resultant is 47 degrees using our protractor using our ruler to determine the size of the vector and that is 270 millimeters at 47 degrees thank you for watching this video don't forget to hit the like button and to share thank you